everyone? Can you all hear me okay? Sweet. All right, so Marv actually said, hey, you should submit a talk for B-Size. I was like, okay, uh, kind of wanted to talk about this. Like, okay, I don't know what to call it yet. So I was like, I so I just put, you know, clever InfoSec career title here, thinking, you know, once it gets accepted, I'll think of the actual title. Well, it got accepted, and I never thought of something clever. So that's the actual title. Sorry in advance, I guess. Oh. Awesome. So agenda, you know, this is what I'm going to kind of talk about. Um, yeah, InfoSec basics, uh, experience, and different stuff like that. And, you know, you never start a con never start a conference presentation without a disclaimer. So I saw this tweet. I thought it was pretty accurate. So, yeah, take my advice with a grain of salt, by all means. I'm not an expert. You'll learn that in about one slide. So let's launch into it. All right. First, I wanted to show this clip. I, I saw it on LinkedIn, totally snagged it, and yeah. Hey, do you want to make a difference fighting bad guys and making six figures? Well, do we have the job for you. You don't have to be Iron Man. You can work in cybersecurity. Hell yeah. The U.S. government estimates a labor shortage of about 400,000 people over the next few years in this industry. Here are the three simple things that you need to fill these jobs. One, you need to have 10 years of related job experience. Two, you need to have multiple accredited certifications. And three, most importantly, you gotta be a rock star. Does this sound like you? No, no, that doesn't sound like me at all. Awesome. Come on down and apply at entrylevelcybersecurityjobs.com. We're waiting. It's time to sell drugs. <laughs> he said it better than I could have ever said that. And I thought, man, that's funny. I'm going to laugh and then cry a little. Because that's the impression I've got. Like, who, who's seen this? Like, entry-level job. You need a CISSP and eight years experience. Who's felt that? It, it sucks. And, and I don't like it. I disagree with it. But we're going to talk about that. So a um, little bit about me. Colin Jackson. I go by Didymus. Um, I'm a security engineer. I do mostly blue team work, security monitoring, um, manager sim, different things like that. Incident response, because you know that's that's where you get like really good hands-on experience and get to stress the entire time until it gets resolved, sort of a thing. Um, hoggy, hoggies. Wow, it's early. Hobbies. Um, I like lock picking. That's kind of what got me into info security to begin with. I did lock picking before I got into, you know, info and cybersecurity. Uh, OSINT, I always found that fascinating, kind of got into OSINT, did a couple CTFs at, uh, at some local con cons and things like that. And then, you know, other stuff, I like to do puzzles, crypto puzzles, I mean, obstacle races, things like that, so, yeah. All right, I'm going to talk about me a little bit because they accepted my talk and put me in front of a microphone, so I'm going to talk about me because I'm selfish. Anyway, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been doing security for about 13-ish years, and the reason I say ish and put an asterisk by it is it depends on when you count, start counting. Uh, this is something I'm going to talk about here in a second, but, you know, a lot of times in uh, job postings and stuff, they'll actually say things like X years of experience or relevant experience and things like that. So I thought, okay, if I count the number of years where I had security in my title, I have, you know, four, seven, you know, four or five-ish years experience, but I don't count that because I kind of don't think you have to have security in your title to be a security person. I, I believe that vehemently. So, um, so I graduated in 2008 um, from Utah State University. Anyone? Anyone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, and I got a job at Utah State, like, like a full-time, you know, grown-up big person job at Utah State, and I was a sysadmin. And I was, uh, I worked at the library uh, in their systems department, and it was one of those IT jobs where you had many hats, where you did everything. You designed a random web page, or you maintained the databases, or you did this, or someone downloads a virus and you have to fix it, you know? So we got to do a little bit of everything. And what's interesting is, like, I had taken, um, I did MIS, uh, information systems, I remember thinking, I want to be a DBA, because they'll get paid a lot of money, and, I like databases. And then I took a security class. It's like, 
this is so much cooler than databases. This is really cool. I want to do that. So, you know, I graduated anyway, and I thought, I want to get into security, but, you know, I got the sysadmin job. There is some security components. And then I just started volunteering with my team, like, hey, so-and-so got infected again. And it's like, I'll take it. I know that's not the fun part, but that's the most security-related one today. I'll do that. Like, if it's anything security or, like, the annual audit, hey, we need to review our firewalls, central IT security wants us to do it. You need to do it. It's like, I'll do it. It's like, volunteer for the security grunt work, even if it's, like, even if it's a mini hats job. Um, okay. After that, I was a government contractor. Worked at Hill Air Force Base for a couple years as a software security engineer. Sounds really cool. We basically downloaded patches, loaded them on Air Force systems, tested them, and wrote a report. It wasn't as glamorous as it sounded. We did some other things as well, but, you know, uh, so I got some actual security in my title experience, and then they changed the contract and everything, had a different thing. So I've never announced this publicly, but I was a SharePoint admin for six weeks. So, and that whole time I applied for jobs and interviewed. So, I mean, we, we all have dark times in our past. You know, we have little hiccups in our security journey. That was one of mine. After that, I worked for a uh, finance company as a senior security analyst. That was really fun, and that was great because I had a mentor, and he said, hey, have you ever done an internal pen test? I was like, no. He's like, cool, you're coming with me. We're going to do this. Like, hey, there's a server. No one remembers the, the password. So we're going to dump the passwords, and we're gonna, I'm going to teach you how to use uh, John the Ripper. It was so cool because I got to do these hands-on things. It was really neat. It was my first introduction to, like, Sims. And then shortly thereafter, they laid off the security team. I was one of them. So I got a job as a monitoring engineer, and I had... That year, or, let's see, I, I did that for about three years or so. And it was interesting. Um, so full-time job, and I didn't just do security monitoring. We also did, like, application performance monitoring. And basically, we would build and maintain the tools that the SOC and the NOC would use, which is pretty interesting. Um, but it was, it was like general monitoring. And one of the things I discovered was, like, you know, I want to get involved in the security community, especially here in Utah. Like, we have great resources here and local cons and stuff. And so I'd go to my boss and I'd say, hey, can, can, I, can I go to this? Like, I was a full-time employee. I want to go to this. Like, no, you're not a security person. It's like, yeah, I am. I, I, I did this before I worked here. I have some security certs. I'm a security person. Like, no, you're a monitoring engineer. It, it, it won't get approved. I was like, seriously? Like, it, it's like, it's like, you know, it was St. Con or something. It's like, it's like 300 bucks. Like, well, you're not a security person, so we're not going to send you. I was like, fine. So I would take PTO. And we're going to talk about this later. I'd take PTO, and I'd go so I'd get involved with these and still get security stuff. Um, eventually, I moved over to the security team within this company, and then I got to go to conferences. Like, and they're like, oh, you're a security person now. Yeah, you can go. It's like, anyway. And then my current job, um, been there since uh, 2018. Do a lot of you know, stuff on the slide before. So there you go. So how do I get a job in InfoSec? By the way, not an expert. So, spoiler, it depends. Um, what I have found in talking with several people is, like, if you're just graduating or just getting out of, you know, whatever, and you want to get your first full-time job in security, the three easier ways to get in are the following. And I'm up for other suggestions as well. But this is what I've had um, experience with or people have told me. So the first one is if you can get a job as a SOC or a NOC analyst. Like, if you're, like, finishing up school and you can get one of these jobs, it's great, especially graveyard shift, because then you can get paid to study. But anyway, um, these, are, these are definitely entry level. You get hands-on experience. It's good. Um, so that's one way. Another way, this is kind of my, my way in, was the many hats IT job. You wear many hats, and you're like, you're, you're like the everything person. You, you do all the stuff. And then the third way that I've been told is go into development, become a, become a you know, an engineer, uh, like a development engineer of some kind, and then you can like transition into application security. This is also the path that a lot of pen testers will take, you know, kind of stuff. Um, so this isn't an exhaustive list. This is like three, like there's, it's easier to get in these, I guess. Okay, rant, I kind of already mentioned this. You don't need security in your title to be a security person. It, it, 
I, I think it was that one job that really got to me where it's like, you're not a security person, it's, you're a monitoring engineer. It's like, no, I'm, swear word, no, I'm not. And then another thing that I like to rant about is security is everyone's job. Security can never scale, but if you can like train with your, train your coworkers and stuff to like look for security concerns or security problems and report it to the security team or whatever, like if you notice something, like if, you've, if you see something, say something kind of a thing. I really like that, so. All right, so basics of info security careers. I, I saw this, I thought it was funny. Um, don't, don't just go straight into pen testing because a lot of times I've found is they wanna make sure you know basics because yeah, otherwise they might label you as a script kitty or whatever, or you may not land the job. But a couple of things. So foundational knowledge and technology. This is, this is important, you can learn it. it covers lots of things. So understand networking and protocols. I mean, you don't have to be an expert in any of this, but you need to have some basic understanding. There's free resources, there's YouTube videos, there's books, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, programming, at least basic programming, or understand how programming works and runs a program sort of stuff. Passion, this is kind of a bigger thing. I, I was listening to a webinar just this week from Black Hills Info Security talking about uh, getting hired as a threat hunter. But one of the things the guy said is like, it seems interesting like between the baby boomers, Gen X, it's more like years experience and stuff, but then like millennials on, it's like, what, how passionate are you about this? Or are you teachable? Like, because we can teach you this, but if you have the drive and determination, it's a lot easier to work with. It's, it's kind of interesting. You should look it up. So passion. Okay. Why do you care about security? What, what gets you excited? What keeps you up at night is a question we'd ask a lot of the time. And think evil, do good. So it's kind of a security mindset. Like when you look at something, do you immediately start thinking, how can I break it? Because my kids do. But you know, also things like, how could this be weaponized? Like, oh, I have this new thing. Like you don't even have to sign into this website and you can see our database. Like let's think evil about this for a second. How bad of an idea is that? Like, you don't want to, like, just throw FUD and everything, but you kind of do want to see, like, you know, let, let's, let's think evil. How would a hacker use this? Or how would they exploit this kind of a thing? Let's see. People skills. This is important not just for security jobs. This is important for every job. But people skills are extremely valuable. I'm not saying I have great people skills, but they do help. So can you convey complex ideas? Or can you convey... Um, like an idea or a project or something to someone regardless of their background. Like could you talk to someone who's highly technical saying like here's what we want this, pro this project to do or whatever. Or can you go to finance and explain this is this project, here's why it's beneficial for you. It's going to generate this revenue or it's going to reduce this cost. You know, can you kind of steer it to like know your audience sort of a thing. Um, project management. Now, nowadays, it's like everything you do, if you can organize work, project manage, it just helps. Like even when you're applying for jobs, if you have project management skills and you're applying for jobs, approach it kind of like a project. Like, okay, I'm going to do resume tweaking at this time, and I'm going to apply for these jobs this week and kind of plan it out and track it. Like you can use these skills not just for like work, but also like finding work. So, made a leadership, why security is important. This is kind of, a, this is like, don't just doom and gloom and fear, because fear doesn't really help. But like, this is why it's important. It'll help us in the long run this way. It'll, we can land bigger deals if we're in a for-profit company. We can, you know, protect our students, our, you know, patients, our, their data and stuff. So, um, this is extremely true nowadays. This, this wasn't the case when I first got in, but cloud computing. Everyone's in the cloud, several people, you know, AWS, GCP, Azure, seems like the majority is in AWS, but at least having a basic understanding, knowing how this works. You can get free accounts, you can also get not so free accounts and get scared by the bill really quick. You know, that, that's called experience. So I've been in interviews before, it was like, do you have AWS experience? Like, well, yeah, you know, I had a little pet project here, and then I also had, you know, a $200 bill that I wasn't expected. So yeah, I'm experienced in AWS, and then you get a chuckle out of them, and then they're like, this person is funny. So cloud computing, at least basics. Learn it, um, get familiar with it. Let's see, and Python, because yeah, security. I don't know Python, but yeah. Uh, who's seen this before? Who feels this way? I'm looking at jobs. I hate it. 
So big red X, boo. I wish, so I'm not a people leader, unfortunately, which I'm actually okay with, but I wish more places were like this. It's like, hey, we wanna hire you, you'll get your experience here. We're, we're willing to take the chance to like, you know, take a couple months to get you up to speed or give you projects and things like this. Like, if I start a company, I wanna do it like this. But anyway, throwing in memes to keep people awake, mostly myself, but there you go. All right, so experience. This is, this is interesting, especially now, because you know, back in the day, I'm not that old, but back in my day, it was like, I saw very few jobs that didn't require a degree, a bachelor's degree in computer science or IT or related field, you know, the catch-all related field that they get to determine sort of thing. And, but now more companies are moving towards experience. Like, you don't need a four-year degree necessarily. Do, like, could we take certificates or boot camps or things like that? So I kind of want to talk about degree versus experience for a minute. Um, I took the degree path. You know, some jobs, like, it could be a mandate. It could be a contractual agreement. It's like, no, we have to have degrees. It's, it's just something written in, like, they may not have wiggle room on it, um, which is, you know, it is what it is. But you can get degrees, like, uh, I'm gonna, yeah, there it is, WGU. I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, nice thing about degrees is you, it covers like the plan, like, so information systems, for example. You learn about web design and stuff like this, but you also learn these auxiliary things like project management or economics or accounting, which can be valuable in the long run. Like, okay, it, it's not just this narrow focus, but they also have some of these other skills that are a bit more well-rounded. Great. And with some graduate programs, some degrees, you actually graduate with some certifications. WGU is one of those. They have degrees in like cybersecurity. And part of the plan is you graduate and you have X number of CCNA degrees or, or wow, certs. Wow, it's tired. I should have slept better. So that's nice. We'll talk about certs in a second. So versus experience. So let's move over there. So instead of like, graduating and then going into a four-year program, it's like, hey, I want to get right into the job field. Let's do that. So it's a quicker path to employment because you're not taking a four-year, you know, get my degree before I start working full-time. Possibly less debt. Possibly you won't have all that student debt that you would get if you had gone with a degree. And then build, build skills. More hands-on, you know, technology or hands-on learning than necessarily like you're in a class and you're learning about stuff like so book knowledge book smarts versus hands-on I've actually done this like oh yeah I, I worked for a small company I had to I was their one IT guy and I had to you know set up the firewalls and I did all of that stuff and I learned it this way instead of you know theoretical like learning about it in books or something I don't know is this making sense I feel like I'm rambling just mumble rabble rabble okay Okay, certifications, just get a CISP. That's all you gotta do. Get a CISP, you'll get a job. If you don't know um, Javid, he made this several years ago. It's, the, uh, it's a YouTube video called The Benefits of Being a CISP. He talks about how you can be pretentious and you can get like a wallet with a clear thing and basically flash it like a badge and you can just bust in and be like, CISP! And so I had to throw that in because it's a great video. But for real though, okay, certifications versus not certifications. <laughs> um, are they good, are they bad? Well, it depends. Spoiler alert, it depends. That's gonna be every slide, by the way. Um, so, when I see an entry-level uh, resume come across or whatever, it's like, hey, they're just about to graduate or whatever, but hey, they have some certification, they have like Security Network Plus or something. It's like, hey, they have something that, that stand, may, helps you stand out from a crowd. Also, if you're a student, you can usually get a student rate at CompTIA certs. That's what I did. I was like, oh, yeah, it's like half price. I'll totally do that. Um, Certs are helpful. It, it does depend on the cert. You know, if you're applying for, you know, a, oh, I don't know, like a network degree, or, or network degree, calm down, jeez. If you plan for a network um, admin or a network security job, and it's like, hey, you've got some CCNA certs, or you've got, you know, network plus, or network specific certs, that tells me, okay, they don't just memorize ports and protocols, but you know, they had to pass a test and actually did this. Or even the ones where you, you have to build a home lab or to pass a test, that's helpful. Um, what kind of security are you interested in? So this is kind of like, which cert would be the most bang for my buck or the most beneficial, and which certs are more like generalist and it's kind of a, it's a, kind of a higher bar so they can like discriminate against people who don't have it. 
It's lame. And if you're getting certs just so you can have alphabet soup after your name on LinkedIn, then maybe don't get certs, otherwise you look like a North Korean general. So anyway, there you go. Okay, so starting on the top left, I should have animated this, but um, some general security certs. The, these are like, I would say these are entry levels. You can get them right now. They don't require like prerequisites that I know of. Um, CompTIA, a lot of the star plus ones, you know, security plus, network plus, um, that kind of stuff. CEH, I don't have this. There's been some rumblings in InfoSec Twitter about that, but I, I know people who have it. They say it's good. It's more hands-on. It's definitely for ethical hacking, so more of that red team, purple team pen tester type track. And INE, they have their eLearn security certs, which you can sign up for and you can get a couple of those certificate of completion type things. It's kind of, I mean, it, it's way easy, like lo low barrier to entry and it's like you can put that on your resume. All right, so moving to the right, these are advanced security certs. So these are more general or slightly more specialized. So CISSP, you know, so you can, you know, flash your badge. It's a mile wide and an inch deep. It covers the 10 security domains. It's great, like, because it's, you know, it covers everything and unfortunately, a lot of times recruiters are like, oh, I know what CISSP is, so I'm just gonna look for that. And it's like, well, about that you shouldn't. Like, there's other things out there. So I, I said earlier, like, know what kind of security you're going into. If you wanna go into like auditing or something, the CISA would be something more like that. It's like certified info systems or security audit, something like that. Um, then there's more specialized, like SANS puts out a lot through their GIAC organization, so GSEC, GCIH, things like that. Um, yeah, and then specialized security certs. These are more advanced that, you know, I'm using pen test as an example, but you can get the, you know, GIAC penetration tester, web app pen tester, PNPT, that's the cyber mentor, great content. I love, he has really good stuff. OSCE, which is kind of more advanced than the OSCP, pen test plus. So, See where I'm going? Ramblings of Colin, okay, anyway. Community involvement, this always helps. So the very first security con I ever went to was B-Side Salt Lake City. It was in 2015, it was down at Thanksgiving Point, and I thought, this is cool, this is what I wanna do. Um, so you're already doing it, you're here, this is awesome. Also, there's B-Sides all over the world, so lots of major cities have a B-Sides, like B-Sides, you know, Las Vegas, besides, you know, North Carolina, like there's, they have a lot. Um, another local con, which is great, is Saint Con. I've been going there a few years, I really enjoy that. Def Con, it's right in Vegas. These cost a little more, it's fine. And then there's also non-security or less security oriented local conferences you could go to. I'm talking Utah specific, but you know, like Open West and Big Mountain, this is a great place. A lot of them are dev conferences, great things to go to. And this one, I really, I believe in, I'm a believer, I'm not only a, the president and the client sort of thing. I'm just kidding, I'm not the president. But volunteer at cons, like especially community cons, it's you know by the people for the people sort of thing. Um, when I was working as a monitoring engineer, not a security engineer, I would take PTO and then I would volunteer. It's great because you get to work the con, you get to meet people, and you usually get in for free a lot of the times, which is definitely beneficial. And if you don't wanna work the con, Volunteer to speak, like submit a proposal with a better title than this one. Submit a proposal so you can present at the con and then you usually get a free pass but you don't have to work for part of the con. So that's actually what I would do. I would volunteer and I would also, you know, offer to speak at these cons that work wouldn't pay for and I'd take PTO and then I could get a free pass and come in and network and hallway con and I would recommend it. Um, local groups and clubs, um, there's local DEF CON chapters you can join. There's DC-435, there's DC-801, 801 Labs here, there's hackerspaces, student clubs. How many, how many people are students here? How many know of a student club? Like info security or just info, like tech? They're around, yeah, so. And then online, they mentioned the B-side Slack, there's Discord channels, there's, there's lots of places where you can get involved virtually. Um, okay, free resources, YouTube, it's awesome. I work for a learning technology company, but I still use YouTube to learn stuff as well. And I mean, this is why it's free resources. I really like Network Chuck. He has some of the coolest things. It's like, do you want to learn networking, cloud, or hacking? Like, it's awesome hands-on stuff. A lot of times it's like, go buy a Raspberry Pi, I'm gonna teach you how to do this, or make a quick home lab. Like, his stuff's really good. I really like DC Cybersex channel. Um, I like Nullbyte. Uh, the Cyber Mentor, he's the one who does the uh, PNPT 
certifications for ethical hacking. Uh, another free resource that I've been really liking lately is uh, Black Hill Info Security, BHIS. About every week they do a, a webinar, and a lot of times they will do a pay what you can threat hunting class. It's like, pay what you can. If you can't pay anything, it's still like, here's a free six hour class on a Saturday to learn threat hunting or something. A lot of times with free open source tools. Really like it. And INE, that was a, that e-learn security certification thing, so. Podcasts and feeds. Um, this is one, this helps because a lot of times in the interview, one of the things that we ask on my team when interviewing is like, what do you do to stay current? How do you stay in tune with what's going on in the security thing? So it's like security now, you know, they talk about current security trends. On Reddit, there's NetSec, and there's other ones. This isn't an exhaustive list. Um, things that are, like, sometimes you just need brain candy, but it's still security related, Darknet Diaries. If you're not listening to Darknet Diaries, you should listen to Darknet Diaries, because it's really good. Um, if you're a privacy nerd, Intel Techniques puts out one with Michael Basil. Uh, it's a security privacy and OSINT show. A lot of times they'll talk about current events and then interesting stuff. And then, uh, InfoSec Twitter, that's, that's my best source for human intel type thing. Um, on Friday, there's usually the hashtag FF, follow Friday. So follow big names in InfoSec, and a lot of times they'll do like FF and like they'll list like five people or 10 people in that field. And it's like, hey, wonder what they're talking about or whatever, and you can follow them. Twitter's free, you can follow it, it's really great. And you can get to know people, so it's like you go to a conference like, oh, I'm, I'm so-and-so, like, oh, hey, I'm Marv. It's like, I follow you on Twitter. I know Marv, you know, for example. Docs, yeah, sorry. Um, more free resources. Um, I mentioned Discord. Um, there's some local ones that I'm a part of. There's other ones that, you know, you can find it. Look for it, you can find it. Home Lab Projects, this, this isn't necessarily a free resource, but, you know, Raspberry Pis are cheap. You can make a Home Lab out of Raspberry Pis. You could have like older computers, like, hey, I want to learn Linux, but I have this old computer, let's blow it away, install Linux on it, and teach myself Linux, for example. It's always helpful to learn Linux, by the way. Uh, there's places where you can get downloadable um, capture the flags, like VulnHub and CTF Time, where you can actually download them, install like virtual machine environments, and then you can actually, some of them will have walkthroughs, some of them you have to stumble through and do the CTF on your own. This is great because it's hands-on skills and like in an interview you're like, have you ever done such and such? It's like, well, I've done these CTFs and we did this and you know, I learned about you know, SQL map and you know, learning SQL injection, how I was able to do that and this, this pays dividends in interviews. Uh, KringleCon, this is something Sans puts on every Christmas. It's an online CTF, it's kind of fun. I think it's starting either this week or next week. It's kind of fun. Hack this site, try Hack Me. These are free sites that you can legally hack. It's kind of fun. So, all right. So the best resource, talk to people. Um, I, I love going to conferences and people are like, hey, I challenge all of you to meet five people you don't know and ask their name or what they feel like sharing and what they do. Get to know people. Hallway Con is the most effective way to meet people. I don't know where I was going with that. Hallway Con's a really effective way to like get resources to can like help you. It's like, oh, you work for so-and-so? Do you know XYZ person? I met that person at B-Sides. There you go. Also, this is actual footage of a TCP handshake. It's not awkward at all. Anyway. Okay, interview time. Here, here are your dues. Have a LinkedIn profile that shows or showcases what you want the hiring manager and the recruiter to see. Um, do some research on the company. Actually know what they do. You know, poke around a little bit. You can do open source intelligence and like, you know, uh, I'm gonna go do a DNS lookup. This is like passive. This isn't actual hacking. But like passive, like, oh, you have your stuff behind Cloudflare. So I may need to understand Cloudflare as a WAF because I'm, I'm applying for the security team or whatever. You know, you can get information about that and it'll show, hey, this person did their research and they know some of the technologies that they would be doing if they get this job. That's helpful. Does this company like line up with what I do? That's always helpful. It, it, it's nice to work for a company you can actually get behind, you know, if you have that option, of course. OSINT, you know, LinkedIn, you can find people who work there, you can find the technologies. It's like, you know, I'm so-and-so, the network manager, and we, and skills include Palo Alto and Fortinet, and you know, you can glean information that way. There's a B-Sides talk about that several years ago. I throw this on my, on my LinkedIn. 
um, just throw that in. It says something in base64. And part of it is like, if you're coming in for an interview, say this code word to me. And I've had like three people and the people I've interviewed who have actually said it. So I was like, oh, you did some research and you know base64. Good for you. Interview don'ts. Don't hack their site. That really ticks them off. I just don't do it. A job interview is not permission to hack their site. Don't social engineer your way into an interview. Um, I, I have an example about that. Don't be a creep. Don't like Facebook stalk the people. I mean, do it tactfully, I guess. I don't. Mm. Yeah, okay, so I'll tell a story. I, I've done a bad one and I've done a good one. So I was working as a monitoring engineer and I wanted to get over to the security team internally. So I knew the hiring manager and they posted something on their app security team. I was like, oh, I, I want to get over there and I want to learn more about AppSec or whatever. So I just sent him a uh, calendar invite. It's like, hey, I'd like to go over, I'd like to meet with you sometimes to talk about this position, you know, rec number and everything. You know, take a look at resume, talk about it. He's like, yeah, throw something on my calendar, half hour, we'll talk about it. So we met up, he's like, cool, so let's look at these resumes. And, and so I like pull out my resume and I start talking through it. He's like, okay, interesting. He's like, so you got any other resumes? He's like, no, I just brought my own. He's like, you're not with HR? I thought we were going over resumes. He's like, no, no, I'm over on this team. I, I want this job. He's like, oh, well played. Well, you got 27 minutes. Let's, let's talk about this for a bit. And he was kind of like, Okay, I'll tolerate this weirdo. Do I want to hire this guy? Spoiler alert, he hired me three years later at a different company. So <laughs> That's, that, that was the failure story. That wasn't the success story. Okay, this, this, the success story was hallway con. So I was going to a conference downtown, a uh, local community security conference, and I applied for the job, and then I went on LinkedIn, and I looked up the people. It's kind of helpful to have a second LinkedIn that isn't your true, true name. Anyway, I was looking up the security team. It's like, okay, so there's this guy, and then there's this woman here, and then, okay, I'm going to bump into them and, you know, talk to them. So I saw him at the, at the uh, conference or whatever in the hallway. I was like, oh, hey, who do you work for? He's like, oh, such and such company. He's like, I just applied there. I was like, oh, really? Yeah. Fancy me? Yeah, I just applied. Is, isn't it, how, is, how random is this? It wasn't random. <clears throat> But I got the job, so it worked, I guess. So don't be creepy, but it's like, oh, I just applied for it. Are you, do you work there? Are you on what? Yeah, social engineering, I guess, but anyway. So that's my advice. Again, I'm not an expert. My advice has no warranty attached, but anyway. Um, those are some of my thoughts. Does anyone have any questions or comments or heckling, mostly heckling? Oh. That was a good one. Um, I copied this, threw it into the appendix. I didn't know if I'd use it, but those are some of the things, um, free resources. I took this from that free webcast that I attended earlier. But anyway, that's my talk. Thanks for tolerating and listening to me. So.